Presentation today. There aren't quite a lot of slides. Don't panic. We've tried to put a lot of information onto here. It will all be available on the website, the whole presentation. We are actually filming the event as well. So, just to warn you, if you ask questions, etc., we are putting the event up so that people who haven't been able to attend today are able to kind of hear the questions that were, were being asked. I should say to you, part of today's event is exactly to get questions from you. We are putting stuff up onto the website. Like everyone else, we've developed our response to this once the government has asked us um, uh, to do this. And the rules are evolving, as you will all know, um, as we go along. We won't have got everything right on the website, so part of getting questions from you is, is kind of good enough. Okay, we need to change that, we need to put extra information on there. So please don't feel afraid at, at the end. I have a, a, this is like, I don't know, one of those sort of question time or something like that, but I have a panel of experts who I will be able to turn to and hopefully point you in the direction for um, answers uh, to questions later. And I do want to get through the presentation so we've got time um, for you to have questions, uh, have your questions, have to get answers from us. First thing I'd really like to say to you all is fantastic to see you all here and thank you for putting yourselves um, uh, forward as sponsors and hosts um, as part of this. I, I think the boroughs reacted brilliantly. From day one I had people bringing up the office, offering accommodation, whether it was rooms, whether it was whole houses actually, um, uh, in some cases. So it is brilliant for us to be able to see that and we are trying to do our bit to make that as simple as possible for everyone to um, engage with this uh, scheme and make sure uh, we've got put all the information that we need available um, to you. I will quickly run along who's on the panel so you know what kind of expertise we've got here or who to direct your questions to. So on the right hand end, I'm going to try and recognise them from the back of their heads. It's Graham Russell, who's our Assistant Director of Finance and he's dealing with the two hundred pound, the three hundred and fifty pound payments, um, etc. We then have Paul Martland, who's from our children's services, who will deal with questions about children getting into school, those sorts of um, things. They may well have to stand up to use the microphone when they're answering questions, as the lead is is not necessarily long enough to go along. Then we've got Leia, um, who, who is here answering questions on the home visits. So uh, Leia's organising the home visits when when we know people have arrived, um, etc. If people have children in the household, Paul's team will actually do that, that um, uh, visit with you. They're obviously looking after the needs of the children, etc. I've then got Mary Ann Foxwell from um, Citizens Advice Wandsworth, who are actually working directly with us, um, giving that advice around benefits, access to pretty much everything, actually. Um, and I've got stand out the back there as well. So afterwards, in your net networking session, um, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to do that. We've then got Roger, who's from our work match service. So he will he'll be able to talk to you about extending what's normally a service primarily aimed at residents. So um, we've extended that. So we're particularly looking to get people access into local work um, here. I have Dave from our Dave Worth from our housing team. We'll be able to talk more generally about housing, housing availability um, in the borough, perhaps a bit longer term, um, where we're looking um, around that. And then I've got oh Hannah, sorry Hannah, Hannah I've met a couple of times, but Hannah is from our CCG, so from the NHS. Um, uh, here we'll be able to talk to you about registering people with GPs and the other services that. Are are available. And last but not least, I've got Lola um, uh, on the end, who's from our regulatory services part. So they're the ones doing the checks on homes, which I suspect some of you will find quite aggravating as we go through it, judging by some of the uh, response I've had. But again, we're, we're trying to get all of that 
So I'm going to try and give you a run through of the scheme, what we're doing as a council towards um, uh, running that scheme, the information that's available um, out there, and then as I say, we'll get, we'll get through to um, questions. Um, so firstly, and most of you will know this, Homes for Ukraine um, scheme effectively provides a route once you've matched a sponsor um, uh, with uh, a Ukrainian, either family or individual who wishes to come over here. Um, you're asked to offer accommodation for six months, for a minimum of six months. You'll see later on there are various timescales quoted in the schemes at the moment. <coughs> I suspect some of this will change as we go along from the government, but we're going to talk about the scheme that's available here. Once people have visas, they're given access, full access to benefits, full access to ability to work, full access to schooling, NHS services. Um, Etc. And of course, importantly, and again, we'll cover this a little later on, access to uh, English second language um, for them should, should they um, require that. Um, so lots of information out there, most of it on websites as, as ever on here. You'll find that we've got our own dedicated portion of the website <laughs> we'll loading all of this um, kind of thing um, on there. As I've said, your feedback on the resources and the way we're dealing with this is really, really appreciated because it helps us make the scheme easier as we go along and better as we go along. Kind of new to all of us as we're, uh, as say, as we're taking this response. Um, so what's the council's role? We're required, as most of you will know, to undertake DBS checks on everyone in a sponsor household over 16. I'm, I'm going to cover a slide on that um, later. We're, we're, I'm also going to cover a little bit on the home assessments that we're required to do. So those are the basic two things we're required to do. And then we're asked to put in place uh, a, a visiting and a kind of wraparound support service. And that's largely about providing guidance, working with the likes of um, uh, CA Wandsworth to provide you know, uh, uh, a guidance advice and guidance on things like getting access to benefits, getting access to GPs, schools, and all those um, kind of things. One of the things I want to stress is that the, the work that we're doing is completely independent of the visa application process. So some of you will already know that families arrived before we even knew what this scheme was going to be um, and got it up and running. So nothing in the DBS checks or the home checks prevents that's all done by the government and the home office uh, or arriving in, in this country. Clearly what we're doing is when we know families have arrived, we're as quickly as possible putting all these, um, the checks that we're required to do in place. So DBS <laughs> checks, and I'm only going to do this very briefly. Um, we're required to do this. The government, in effect, so that any of you who have been in the Scouts or anything else will know there are various different types of DBS checks that you can um, uh, get done. The system works in a particular way. So we're, in effect, helping people access that system to get the DBS checks done. And we're kind of monitoring the throughput of those DBS checks. If I'm honest, we were quite worried about how long this might take to go through the process, but actually it's turning around reasonably um, quickly. So we've got 700 people already started their DBS checks. We've got 450 already completed and about 400, just under 400 who've got their certificates through for um, uh, DBS checks. So we can answer some more questions on that later on, but the detail of the um, scheme and how you go through it um, is available in the system for you. Home assessment checks. So we're required to carry out home assessment checks. We've had a lot of toing and froing with government about what this actually means because most of the guidance, and we want it to be quite light touch, but clearly make sure that the people coming into this country are going into a safe um, environment. We now have a kind of checklist of minimum expectations um, uh, from the government, and that includes probably the most difficult if you're not a 
manual already is you're required to have a gas safety certificate, which I, certainly my house my house hasn't got a gas safety certificate on it, and I suspect many other people won't. We will help you go through the process of applying for that and all the rest of it if you need assistance with that. So when we when we do the home visit, we'll actually provide you some um, assistance around that. There are other basic things in the scheme, like number of people who we expect in, in, in an individual bedroom, that sort of thing. So making sure the house is, is big enough um, uh, for people to go into it. The visit, just to avoid confusion, is carried out by our regulatory services partnership. They are based in Merton, so we share the service across Merton, Richmond, Fontaine's and Wandsworth. So when you get someone emailing you with a Merton email address, that's why it is, because they're, uh, they're, they're in partnership with us um, doing that. Um, again, we've got just under 200 of those booked at the moment. We've got um, 28 um, kind of in the process of getting booked and 127 completed, and that's going up all the time as we run through this process. So we've put resources into that, we're doing them as quickly, um, uh, as quickly as we can. What will happen when my guest arrives? So we don't know when your guests are going to arrive. The system that we've got access to from the government would indicate there should be an awful lot more people here than there actually are here um, at the moment. So we're kind of reliant on you to tell us when your family uh, has arrived. There's an online form um, there for you to fill in. Once you've done that and given us the details, we will arrange a visit with you as soon as we can. At this moment, the numbers arriving are relatively small, but visa numbers are going up, visas granted are going up quite rapidly. And Walford as a borough, now outside of counties, who obviously have a much bigger population, is top of the list in terms of visas granted in there. So we are expecting more people to arrive um, uh, kind of in, in a bigger bulk at this moment in time. So our teams will arrive, will arrange a visit to you. If you have a children, let's say, if you have children arriving with you, will come from our children's services um, team. They'll talk to you about schooling, they'll talk to you about any other support needs um, uh, for the children and family, and they'll cover the whole family um, while they're there. Um, clearly, and as, as I've already said, you know, healthcare, finance system, and, and a lot more, and they'll be able to point you to a lot more information on there. Um, so you're probably all aware that, that there's a there's, there's what's described as an optional thank you payment for three hundred and fifty pound a month, um, which we're administering um, through there. At the moment, it says for up to twelve months. Um, uh, uh, through this, so we will administer those when we we are required to only pay that out once the DBS checks and the household checks been put. But you can probably understand the fairly obvious reasons um, uh, uh, for that, which is why we're trying to get through those checks as um, quickly as possible. We'll be asking for details of bank accounts and all the rest of it so that we can set those payments up regularly um, uh, with you. There's a thing on there which is the website address, and you'll, you'll get more of the website uh, address on there. Healthcare, if we go on to healthcare. There we go. Um, healthcare is safe. You can register with a local GP, and there's details on there of how, um, uh, how to do that. And I'm sure we'll be able to answer questions on other um, issues. We are obviously looking at things like trauma support, mental health support, all of those sorts of things, and how we make sure that's wrapped around with all the other things that um, uh, these families will be facing coming new into um, into the country. You can get access to things like COVID-19 vaccines. COVID-19 vaccine take up in Ukraine is not very high at this moment in time compared with um, the UK. So that that's available, as I say, there's a lot of guides being developed already available on uh, websites. Most of it has been translated, so you've got it in Ukraine, Russian, and English in there, not all of it. Some of it is still being translated as we go, um, uh, as we go through that. Um, mental health support, uh, as it says on here, we, 
Yes, can self-refer refer to talk ones where they will kind of help people into the, the sort of support that they might need um, longer term. And there are guides on there. If, if I'm honest, and I, I hope Hannah, I'm not talking out, you know, mental health services are under quite a lot of strain already um, in, in, in the country. So working this through, working with the NHS about how we make sure people who I would have thought fairly obviously are going to be under a fair amount of strain having arrived in the circumstances that they're, they're arriving under is a big issue for us, I think. It's a big issue for us as a country about how we um, manage that through. We're obviously aware of it, the GPs are aware of it, and we'll be seeking to give access um, to those services. Education, so um, government's been quick to confirm to schools that they can admit above their normal numbers to accommodate children in schools, to provide funding um, for um, schools for children. There are uh, there, there's information on our web pages, although I had a discussion before this that, that may indicate it's not as straightforward as we'd like it to be, um, uh, to register children with schools, and we will do our best to get children into schools as quickly as we can. I know, for example, the first three children that arrived that were before even this scheme was up and running, uh, one of our local schools that accommodates them within a couple of days sorted out schools and were brilliant as as actually generally speaking our schools are um here so i'm confident the school you'll, you'll find a welcome in the schools and the schools will work really well with us to get those children in school as quickly as possible but paul is here to um answer as many questions as we can anything we can't answer tonight we will take away and say we're recording we're taking notes etc we will take those <coughs> questions away and get back to you um, on that. Financial assistance, um, so every individual who arrives can have a £200 one-off payment. Um, uh, Graham is here to be able to answer some questions on that. That is now set up as a, uh, basically you collect, it, you collect a voucher from here and you go to the post office and get the cash payments out. As a council, we don't deal, it seems a bit odd really, we don't deal in cash very much at all. Um, uh, uh, these days, so that's why we're working through um, uh, the local post office on that. Clearly our aim, as quickly as we can, is to get people access either to work or to the benefit system um, uh, in the UK, and that's, that's where the, the government in effect is channeling most of the support. So that's what we're seeking to do. We're giving assistance with those things that us in the UK often don't have to think about too much. So getting a national insurance number, for example, and those sorts of um, things. And, and again, our support teams will be able to help you with that. And indeed, of course, um, CA, CA Wandsworth also are partnering with us. Um, and again, we're putting extra resources, phone lines, etc., into place, and they will be able to cover um, that in more detail around all that kind of support that we hope um, we hope to make easily available. We have Roger here from Work, for, uh, work Match um, as well. So that's a really successful service actually at helping people into work um, locally. So I would hope again that would be a really good way of helping people settle into, um, uh, settle into our communities. And then, uh, again, uh, South Thames College, just over the road from here, is offering a variety of um, English language um, uh, classes for free. Our lifelong learning team, similarly, again, the schools will work with any children who come into the schools, um, looking at how we best get them the language skills um, that they'll need um, uh, through that. So an awful lot that we're trying to put in place ourselves. There are some things like biometrics, which I'm very glad we don't have to deal with um, ourselves, but we will try and give as much advice and guidance as we can to people um, uh, going through this process. So basically, in order to get your three-year stay agreement here, you have to have registered your biometrics like we do on our passports. Um, these days. I'll be absolutely frank with you, I don't know much about this system at all. I'm hoping one of our panel may know a bit more, and Mary's 
nodding her, um, uh, her head down there. What I do know is if you haven't got your passport before you come to the UK, um, you actually, this is where there's been some controversy about people being able to get to visa centres abroad, etc., and get their biometrics um, processed over there. So again, as it says on there, like most of these things, guests don't have to do it straight away when they come into the UK, but as ever, the quicker people are going to stay here for a period of time, I would suggest the quicker you get on that um, path, the better um, in the technical realm. Now. So, happily for my voice, and probably for you all listening to me, that's the end of what I'm going to say on the slides here. I'm going to, I think, is, is this the only road road in the mic that we've got? When do you take the mic? If you think you want to put your hand up, and I'll try and get the relevant member of the panel, we'll get the microphone over to you, and then I'll get the relevant member of the going to be, although I'll look to see if any, anyone knows, but I suspect you don't. I think the answer is that at the moment there's no way of transferring sponsor within the government scheme. And that's a problem for us because it's a, it's a scheme that the government's overseen. That is supposed to be being looked at in, there's a, there's a system called Foundry that we've got access to. Until we've got that sorted out, it's impossible for us to deal with it from our end. But we have, Harriet's actually here, so we will have taken details of what you're doing, and we'll be talking to the government about how we sort that out. Mm -hmm. um, but from our point of view, unfortunately, it's not us dealing with running needs, it's us dealing with the government to be able to swap sponsors. Well, At the moment, there isn't a way of doing that. The problem is, as things stand, and yeah. we're quite happy to support. Yeah, 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 got, no, I understand. We've got three adults, so it's not a, you know, it's a it's quite expensive. Yeah. We're quite happy to support yeah. them, but, you know, they're getting very anxious. About yeah, no, I'm sure. They've got to on with their lives. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, can you please we, we, we will we will already be doing our best because I know it's an issue that, that we're already dealing with in other um, in other place where so we will deal with it as best you know as best we can. Wendy if you grab the microphone yeah. I'm just as it's not working I understand I'm just gonna grab hands and I said gentlemen in front of our microphone so can I have a printout please of what you've just shown us? Yeah on I'm the sure screen. we're gonna arrange for a printout um, of that to be tonight. I don't know whether tonight we'll be able to possibly. I mean, a lot of office. email addresses and phone numbers up there, and I wrote as fast as I could, but yeah. I didn't keep up. They will be on, we are publishing it on our website, um, on the council, but I'll, I'll make sure we talk to you afterwards and sort something out um, for that, if that's okay. Gentlemen here, I saw, and then I'll come to. Yes, just be sure that it on. Is it working on it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have a question for, I think it's for Paul, yeah. about education. Um, I've got lots of questions that I'd like to be answered tonight, but uh, so, so it's not to uh, monopolise it, but, but I think the most important question is about education. Because we're, we're accepting a family of three, and 
they have a daughter who will be five on May the 9th, which actually is um, Ukrainian Freedom Day. Um, now, um, my, my <coughs> wife uh, uh, works for the Wonderful Theory Impaired Service, and she goes to various schools. She visited a school today, which is the school that our son went to, and has, has found that they do have uh, spaces in their reception. So what I'd like to know is what is the procedure for us to try and apply for uh, the, the daughter to to uh, uh, go to uh, it's Chelsea Park School, um, which is very very close to us. And as I say, where our son went to, we we think the school is brilliant. They are a bilingual school, so possibly that means. Even though it's only English French, they might have um, more uh, more experience of dealing with uh, people whose language first first language is not English. So, if you could possibly run through the procedure which we really need to go through to to get the daughter into into the school that we'd like to uh, bring it to do. I'll, I'll grab this microphone and probably take it to you. This is fantastic. All um, all school admissions go through our admissions team. But you can contact the school directly now to uh, speak to the speak to the um, business officer about the fact that you have uh, a Ukrainian family coming, because I'm sure they can have prep for that. Uh, and then you just have to do an online application. It should be very quick. If you know the details of the family, the family name, the parents' names, the dates of birth of the children, uh, that's all helpful. Uh, and I'm sure you can start. With so we can apply direct to the school. You can apply direct to school. I've always said go and look at the school, talk to the school first. Well, we yeah. know the school very well because that's our need. Yeah, well you might not need to do that then. Yeah. Then just check the school's website, have a look, have a look, there'll be a link on there on how to apply for the place of the school, follow the link uh, and go on to the online application. Um, you do. You do it online. It's working when I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Um, doing it online makes instances. Uh, there are one or two schools, only church schools, that have to pay for records. Jasper Park probably not one of those. So, you know, um, um, schools have admission criteria, but where they've got spaces, they're not applied. So, you, 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 it's, it's only barely by the admissions criteria and priorities. When they're over subscribed, and they're too big for the to get into the section. Um, but even even that case has been, uh, um, the school has been told that in all those the time being, go in and do the action. So it shouldn't be any problem. Well, so so there is, I applied to school and they said they were full and they weren't accepted. If you tell me the name of the school applicants, I'll, 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 I'll deal with it directly. It's probably best not to shame them. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me. Okay, I'm going to go because I know we've got, we've got a lot of people who may be able to use the microphone, might not be able to use modern technology. Yeah. Very quickly, um, if, if we've already been approved for a DPS check for another issue, then do we get a second approval? Or, and do we need to wait for that? The other question on the DPS check is I did fill out the form that came, in, I, I filled out the form that came in the email from Longsworth. Um, Ten days ago, stop working. And um, I haven't had any. I've had a reference number, but no contact. So it certainly wasn't within four days. As the so I'm going to try and can I use that one. Yeah, he's I'm afraid it's going on and off. So I'm going to use one that's got a while. Um, no, it's going on and off. I'm afraid, rather than rather than my inability with technology. It's usually my inability with technology. Um, but the question is about DBS checks and whether if you've already got a DBS check, you need to get another one. The answer is it depends, so possibly not. Um, if you come in, there's a, the, the, the details of the DBS checking system. If you come in on that and ask them the question, tell them what you've got. Um, if you've got a child, for example, you need one of the enhanced DBS checks, etc., etc. But But my understanding is that... that 
the likelihood is you won't need to go through it again if you've already got a DBS check in place that's appropriate um, for that. I'm going to ask, I know the lady there has been indicating for a while. If you stand up, I'll repeat your questions. Uh, it's, I think it's working at the moment. <laughs> questions on the national insurance number and my lady's coming at the weekend and she's really keen to start work as soon as possible how long is that process taking can she apply now before she even arrives and just yeah a little bit more on that working being able to work we don't know the answer, I think, is, is the answer to that. We'll try and find out for you how long it... it I'm the same question to me yeah. here. Um, yeah. She has got a job to go to, but she hasn't received her number. Okay. So there is, there's an online form where... Uh, all, all, I, all I know is that, that you have to use the online, the online form to get the national issue. And I agree with myself, maybe Sasha, the only two is the ingredients, not only so first thing we would have to do is have to apply for biometrics. Without biometrics, you're not going to get the health insurance number. So you need to get the card, and then with this card, you can get the last to get the health insurance number. Okay, so usually it's the card, it takes more two weeks to get the card. So I guess it's not the biometric cost we've got here. So the first thing we have to do is whether you want to choose to go online, to do the form, to do the day, I want to choose, we have two locations in the city of London, so you can go to the room by that. My morning is my night, it's right on Saturday, and we have to live on Sunday, and then Thursday. Okay, so it's taking about a week to get an appointment for your ERT at the moment. Once you apply for that, you have to go and go to the office and to do your biometrics. Don't wait six months. If they want to work, they have to do it within a day one. They apply for the interview for the BRT. Okay. They have to do it right away. Don't, don't wait six months. Okay. You get the six month visa, but you and, and they can stay on that. Yeah. But you have to apply for your BRP as soon as they arrive. So what, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting in terms of, I mean, it, it is really helpful because I say that the schemes are developing, we clearly don't know all the answers around it. If you've got people who want to come in, certainly Mary Ann Steamer at CAW, if you go to them, they can find the answers for you um, and help you work your way through um, uh, through that system. But it's brilliant, obviously, we've got some people who've already been um, through the system and know more about this um, already. May I ask about this also? Yeah. Uh, I arrived here, I think, three, three weeks ago, and I was waiting for this evening to ask more about biometric, okay. and that's why I didn't apply for biometric. Okay. Uh, but I already have a job. So uh, then I have a problem because national insurance, insurance number. Insurance number. number. Then I have a problem because of this or I can't continue. So you will have a problem with employment, but I'll ask, I'll ask Mary Ann. I'm Chief Executive for Systems Advice Wandsworth. I can't actually answer these questions, but I have brokered the um, arrangement uh, with Wandsworth, who generously supported us. And in this room, I've got two advisors, they're at the back. They can answer all these questions. Um, and if they can't answer the question, they will go away and look up the answer and give you. I think it's quite dangerous sharing anecdotal information. It sort of goes against all our instincts because people have got different experiences mm -hmm. and come with different stories. So in, the, in a minute, when, when we're doing the networking session, Elizabeth and Joe, who are at the back, they will sit out there under our banner and they will answer their queries or, and they'll take your details and get back to you if, we, if you can't answer them then and there. So I really, I really think that kind of the, the, the Q&A between each other, although everybody's trying to help, 
it's, it's, it, we need the basis in law um, and a reference to, to give each other proper help. Because they're, they're very good questions. For instance, you don't need a national insurance number to work. Okay? Thank you, Mary Ann, for rescuing me there. And the gentleman here in the green jumper that I saw with you, and that um, I've got a very loud voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I thought it was very useful. I've been very lucky because everything's worked very smoothly so far. Um, but I guess that's a sort of one off, maybe, or part of a lot of things. What would be really useful is if you, could, you must have you've got my email address, and I'm sure you've got most people's email address here, you send us tickets. Can you send us that thing in an email, the, the presentation, to so everyone who's come up? And what would be even better, if you don't, you guys don't mind, is their names and their job roles. <laughs> so if we have a name we can link onto, an email would be great, but just something, when you phone a big thing like one council, and you can go, oh gosh, oh, you know, Pete, you that two miles, I saw the other night, it helps. Yeah, that no, that, that's fine. I'm sure we can. Um, um, I'm, I'm looking to the left, as you can tell, and Harriet's looking horror, horrified. But yes, I'm sure we can. We can um, arrange that um, for you. And what we'll do is we'll have all the link numbers on there, so you know where where to get hold of the people for the different parts of it. Yeah, no. Yeah, fantastic. There's a lady back there. That question for those who didn't hear it was about kind of room sizes and, and the, the inspections around whether people can share rooms, etc. Um, in their Lola. Hello. Um, it's really going to depend on the size of the room and whether the size of that room is adequate to put two people in there to share. Um, so it, it's Okay, so it may well be they'll come back and discuss it amongst the team and make a decision as to whether or not it's borderline or it is just too small. Sorry, what would you, what would you then do if it didn't pass? Well, where would, where would our guests go? So if the, if the room for two people was too small to occupy for two people, then you would have to look at either just having one person or offering another room within your home. So if you've got... Where, where would the one person go? Um, <laughs> it, it's possible that maybe you've got younger children who can share a room, they could. Um, it would depend whether you've got a living room, because we also class a living room as a sleeping room as well, as to whether or not you could offer that sleeping room, the living room as a sleeping room, so long as you've got another room that can be used as, let's say, a, a large kitchen diner. Does that help? Okay, so I'm going to go to, and sorry, there are a lot of hands going up. I will try and pick people as fairly as I can see the lady over, over there. I'm going to ask one of the citizens of Vice Wandsworth team who's, who's indicated they'll, they'll know the answer to give the answer to. Either come up to the front on the microphone or if you're loud enough. Um, sorry, okay. It's not sharing. Sure. You can apply for universal credit without a national insurance number. And when you apply for universal credit, it automatically triggers the process for a national insurance number being allocated. So you don't need a national insurance number. When will that start being paid? In the instance where I have in the country for 10 days, but actually my reading was I need the DNI number, I applied for the DNI number, well, it's actually I think slow. Does that mean she's locked out on two weeks' worth of universal credit? Yeah. So the, it's 
starts from the dates that you make your application. You can't really backdate it. Wow. Okay, that's the kind of thing that not one of the council, but our government really needs to make clear. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to had a lady here and then a gentleman here. Because as soon as what, what we're trying to do is keep ahead of that game. So when you've registered to be a host, you're obviously linked then in with the family. We will try straight away to do home bookings because we don't know how quickly the families are going to arrive here. And if we wait until people actually get here, basically we're going to get a great backlog in our team. So we are arranging home visits as soon as people are available on the I system. I was told that the visas had been granted, so I told we, the Ukrainian yeah, family... I mean, our, our, we, we don't know because we're not granting the visas and we're not uh, um, part of the system, if you like, in terms of granting the um, visas. We don't know how quickly a visa is going to take to be granted. What we know is when people have registered on the system and we're putting our um, processes into place so that you're ready, in effect, for when they arrive. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. Uh, sorry, gentleman here. Yeah, just a quick question for Paul, probably five. Um, we've got a family coming, uh, the youngest child has got specific learning difficulties. Uh, what's the procedure for getting them into the education system where they need to be? Um, well, I mean, obviously, I don't know the details of the specific um, 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 uh, need you're talking about. It's the same, it, entry to the system is the same. You'll be given the option of, 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 of explaining on the, on the admissions form whether or not the child has got any presenting needs or issues, and you'll be able to describe them. Uh, and that might suggest, depending on what that is, that might suggest um, uh, extra support in a mainstream school. Uh, and in very kind of um, extreme cases, it may uh, um, suggest a direction of travel into one of the very special schools. So again, the important thing is to get them into a school and get the admissions process started. Sorry, there was a gentleman here who I said I was coming to next and I didn't come to next, but there you go, so apologies for that. So I have a few questions actually, and before that I would like to make a statement, and that is I am extremely impressed by how Wandsworth has dealt with this challenge. Yeah, yeah. Sadly, we can't get that working as well as we do with the and, um, No, it's been a great deal of work. I think you've done a fantastic job, so well done, everybody. So I have a few questions. Firstly, I am fortunate enough to have our, our uh, refugee already here. She has, obviously, the, the short visa. Um, she needs to go, she wants to go back to Ukraine for some medical procedure, which is half completed, and she feels confident that that's feasible. So the question is, if she goes away with the visa and then comes back, is that likely to pose a problem? I don't know, and you may not know, but that's one question. Okay. Another one is that a lot of people here have already, we've been chatting beforehand, have people of the same age as the lady who's in our house, and it would be great to be able to communicate between us. So I don't know if it's possible to create a community or WhatsApp group or something simple for them people who are here so we could bring them together. And finally, uh, one question that I think I may have a resolution to already, which is about bank arrangements for the refugees. It's quite difficult sometimes to get banks. I would like to point out there is an online bank called Revolut, and if those people who know about it or don't know about it, it's started by one Ukrainian, one Russian Ukrainian, 
and they've been incredibly positive and they have a program that you can download an app and open an account pretty much instantaneously if you are a refugee. So my two questions. Brilliant. I'm going to ask Leo actually to pick up the community piece of that. I'm not sure we're going to know the detail about the visa in and out of the country, but again, we can take that away and try and find out. But Leo, if you want to. So uh, just with respect to um, the peer support network, um, we were really hoping that maybe this evening there might be a volunteer or two who might want to spearhead that. We're here to facilitate and support you in, in getting that together. That was one of the reasons that we felt it was important to get everybody here in person today. So hopefully it would be an opportunity for people to, to come together. So if you are... Um, oh, sorry, there's somebody over there. Where, where are they? I think they're offering to help you. Oh, offering. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yes, yeah, so, so exactly, so that's what we're hoping that um, that might come out of today. So please come and speak to me, I'll help us and say, well, let's figure out how to, how to put it together afterwards, uh, no problem. And with respect to the going in and out of the country on the visa, were you saying you didn't know the answer? Yeah. Same answer as before, I don't know the answer, but my <laughs> colleague does. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say before I hand over to Joe to give the answer is that you may have questions when your guests arrive that you don't know yet. So you can take away a leaflet here tonight that's got our details in. We have access to language lines, so you'll be able to send your guests to us directly and we'll be able to understand them, whatever that their first language is. Um, so please do keep in contact with us. I think Joe's got an answer, but Joe and Elizabeth has an answer for these questions. Hello. I think I believe the answer is that if um, if your guest has a permission to travel letter that gives them a six months entry, you can't enter and leave the country just with the permission to travel letter. You need to do your biometrics and get your British residence permit. And once you have your British residence permit, which gives you the three years in the UK, then you're free to enter and leave as you Brilliant. Now, I'm, I'm just going to come to the lady here um, uh, briefly because it relates to the previous question about community, getting the community to, um, together. I know someone already uh, congratulated what's your council for quick action, but I want to congratulate all of you um, for you know response you, you, you've done. Um, from my accent, you may uh, guess I'm not uh, British, I'm Polish, and uh, I thought that it would be knowing how it is when you arrive in a different country speaking or not speaking the language, maybe it would be wise to um, search among you. Maybe someone speaks Russian or uh, we can kind of create a network of people who can help to settle your respective um, guests. Um, maybe we can set up a WhatsApp group or whatever to just help. Yeah. So brilliant. I, I would encourage people who want to help in that way to come forward, talk to Leia. Um, here we'll take details and as I say it's part of what we're doing. We'll be working with our voluntary sector as well who are generally brilliant on um, uh, this sort of thing. And a number of people on the panel here will have links into them um, as well. We've already talked to people about setting up, you know, sort of coffee mornings and all that sort of thing to get people one might describe as a normal contact, a normal community going. Sorry, there was a lady um, back there who's indicated. Hello, I just want to say I work for DWP, Work Benefit System. So um, I commend you all that are hosting um, uh, Ukrainians that are obviously in trouble. Um, what I want to say is once you, once you get your family into this country, don't wait for a national insurance number, don't wait for your biometric residence permit, so you can actually lodge an application for U universal credit and we can help the um, Ukrainians get the national insurance number. Only um, because you know, the day you lodge your application is from, from that date, you will get your benefits. So even if you wait, don't wait a month or two, just um, apply for your universal credit application. That's what I'm saying. As soon as possible, basically. So if you, if you, yeah, you can do it online. All we require, all we require of them is um, ID. So, um, it's forms of ID if they have it. If they haven't got big forms of ID, we will um, look at every case of it and merit. Um, so, 
Can I can I ask us just because it is quite difficult in in the front of we've got questions going on across that. So I just had one piece of clarification about the forms of ID that the DWP. So you talked about three forms of uh, of. Of ID, sorry, is it possible to get the microphone back just so we can clarify that? And then, if I can ask, I know it's it's great in a way because I want people to network here tonight, but it is very difficult otherwise. So something along the lines of the passport, um, we accept driving licenses from abroad as well, um, and even a national ID card. So it doesn't have to be something from the UK, um, ID from the UK. So any ID that they have from Ukraine. Now, I do understand not everybody will have the forms of ID. Just come with what they have. And the main thing is to lodge the application on the day rather than wait to get all their ID stuff together. Okay. Um, it takes about five weeks for the application to be processed, but it does get backdated to the date of application. And um, whilst the application process is being um, delivered, uh, while the process of application, they do get an advance. So they're not without the money for five, four weeks, if that makes sense. Um, yes, they do. They do. Okay. But you can apply with that in the bank account in place. So can I ask what, what, what I'm going to ask you to do actually is if you talk to CAW are here and say they've got a stand at the back, we'll be able to point you in the direction. I think our um, the DWP advisors as well or associates will be able to help you. They say it's very difficult otherwise if we've got conversations going on and, and bits. So I'm going to I'm going to come to this lady here with a question. And, and, and just a general question: Do they apply online or do they apply in CAW? Uh, I'll get there. I suspect it's online, but I will get there. <coughs> Does anyone know the answer as to whether, if a guest is 65, do they do they actually qualify for the freedom pass? <laughs> yeah. We'll have a look at that. I think is the answer. We, 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 we don't uh, we don't know that. This gentleman here has been indicating for um, a while. Uh, if, if you're going in there, have seen in the guest safety. So if you do a CP12 and send it in, would that be enough or sufficient enough? Um, CP12 is a guest safety for the house that we have to have done to make sure the gas is working okay and there's no carbon monoxide happening. So I'm a gas engineer basically, I have to try and say to save everyone who's trying to find someone. If you go to gas safe website to get someone near you or local engineer for you. What we ask for is that with the gas safe certificate, that it is clear of the address yeah. and the date that the actual inspection was done so that we can see when it's due to expire. So if it's emailed into you, that would Absolutely. Be so just send me a copy of it via email and then the verification letters can go out. Thank you. Uh, yes, just another question on the uh, passport. Uh, you said you had a checklist what's required, I mean, would you be able to give us access to that? Or maybe if that thing changes you to make them. Um, I probably can't give you a copy of it because I don't have it, but we use a, a, a pro forma that, um, so that we standardize the inspection that all the officers are doing. Um, and by having the pro forma, it's then clear of all the things that we, we expect. But I can speak to you after if you've got uh, specific questions with regards to, um, you know, what you are, or what you would like to know about the form. Can you give us a copy of the pre Um I don't have a copy of it. Um, I can't see any reason why not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a pro forma that we use to do our inspections. So there is some, I, I don't see any problem with getting the pro forma up on the website. There is some judgmental stuff around it, clearly, um, within there in terms of you know, visibly what you see as you go around a, um, a, a house, etc. in there. But I don't, I don't see any reason why we can't have that basic list of checks that we're going through um, uh, known to people on there. Can I just say also that on the government's main website, um, there is a checklist of there what is. we are looking for when we do the inspections. So it is very clear on there. Yeah. Um, 
There was a lady there whose hands up. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll ask Mary Ann whether you can pick that up as kind of the general advice to put stuff out there about what sort of things people will need when they're going through um, uh, that application process. Now, I'm, I'm kind of wary that we've said we'll do a QA and a until um, 8 o'clock, so we've probably got time for a couple of more questions. Um, uh, and then I'm going to go to, there's a lady over there. Hi, I'm hosting a mother, uh, a daughter, and their baby, uh, the daughter's baby. Um, they don't all have Ukrainian passports. The mother does, but the others don't. They just have national ID cards, or in the baby's case, just a birth certificate. So should we recommend, do you recommend that we take them to the Ukrainian consulate and, and get them Ukrainian passports as soon as possible for those that don't have it? Or do we not have enough? Room? I don't know. So I think my advice to anyone would be is to register, get the stuff done you need. And I would have thought passports, ID, etc. If you've got access through, as the gentleman said, to the Ukrainian embassy, that would be your best path through so that you've got that kind of formal um, ID, etc. to help you access um, the various services uh, uh, here. One last question we can take lady there So I know our lifelong learning services and, uh, and the college will actually offer courses beyond, so they're adult education courses in effect, but Paul, you may be able to add. Yeah, something. I mean, I think if you went across the road to Southgate <coughs> College and, and, uh, um, and the 16-year-old uh, um, uh, wanted to enrol, they'd get all the support they needed to access the course, but they'd, kind of, uh, they'd, they'd sandwich it with a, 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 an ESOL course as well, so it might take a little bit longer, um, but I'm sure that you could... with further education funding at the moment. Uh, I think you have to be under 19 in your first term of education to get it free. I can look that up for you and we'll check if that's okay. And we will have one of the links that's on in the information is to our lifelong learning team and they deal with adult education. Again, there are various different routes we can put them in touch with to kind of try and help get them back on a track of um, education, particularly education that's linked to work, etc. Mark, can I, yeah. while I've got the mic, can I just yeah. correct something I said earlier on? Uh, my far more sage colleague, Brian View from Admissions, has said that because you're not starting at the beginning of an academic year, um, any children being admitted to school are classed as in year admissions or transfers, and therefore you need to do it through the council's link, 
which you will find on individual schools links, but you'll just end up on the gangsters link anyway, so it's better to start with that. And the forms are recognisable because they are yellow for primary, which you will need at the um, secondary bar, and orange for secondary age. So it, it's an in year transfer or admission. Thank you, um, Paul, for that. And can I just sort of finish by thanking everyone? I hope you can all, all um, hear me. Most people at work tell me I shout at them loudly enough um, most of the time, but ho hopefully you can um, hear me. I want to thank you all again for coming. I'm sorry we haven't been able to answer all of the questions, but I can assure you we will take them away. We will feed the type of questions we've got into future events and into the information that we're producing on our website. I would encourage you, if you've got time, to hang around for um, uh, a short while just to network um, and pick up any connections across you as a group. We will do our best to kind of set up networks and encourage networks and make things um, available to um, uh, people and we'll keep going with information and information events, etc., for you. So thank you again um, for all coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you.